now we're going to start looking at how we actually use this genetic information in the context of psychology to understand this critical question, kind of what is the genetic basis for human characteristics, our IQ, uh, personality variables, all these kinds of things we've been thinking about. We have this overarching question of like, well, how much of us, our individual kind of characteristics is quote unquote determined by our genes versus the environment? This classic question of nature versus nurture. This may not be an answerable question fundamentally because, you know, nature and nurture are fundamentally intertwined. But anyway, we always like to keep things simple, uh, do this compression and say, well, gee, how much is genetic? So uh, the primary technique historically for doing this has been using twins. You have monozygotic twins. So the zygote uh, is this fertilized egg here, identical twins kind of are uh, arise when this splits off into two distinct embryos. Uh, Dizygotic uh, twins are the case when you have two zygotes uh, in the same womb. So basically, you know, two random draws uh, of this genetic variation. Um, and there's only a 50% kind of overlap statistically in dizygotic twins. But for monozygotic twins, they have the exact same set of genes. And uh, so you can compare the case where you have uh, 100% kind of genetic identity uh, versus 50% for this, what we call the additive genetic factor. This is a, a form of a kind of factor an analytic model that's used in this form of uh, genetic analysis. Um, then you have two different environmental factors which are the common or shared environment, so the C factor, and that is uh, uh, estimated to be uh, shared, which means that it's 100% for both monozygotic and dizotic, dizygotic twins. Whatever factor that's kind of common between them uh, is, is shared between them. So you have this differential factor weighting that says the genetic factor is gonna be kind of 100% for for one set of twins and 50% for a different, but the rest of it is gonna be the same. And then there's no linkage between this last factor, which is kind of the unique environment. So those have no shared elements. Uh, so we're partitioning the environment into these two different components of shared and unique. And so you really just run these equations with these factors. There's a, a mathematical technique, which allows you to estimate uh, these factors here, A, C, and E, uh, that uh, best explain the overall variance in the phenotype that you're measuring. So the phenotype is essentially the uh, you know physical expression of the genes that you're interested in. So this is like you know IQ or personality or height or weight, um, and then you use this technique to estimate this heritability factor, which is defined as uh, uh, this A proportion divided by everything else, okay? And so everything else is A, C, and E, so A over the sum of everything else. That's your estimate of heritability from the twins. So we can use that to then uh, plot here on the left the uh, amount of uh, A for each of these different kind of phenotypes. Um, so height, weight, uh, reading, etc. According to the twin studies, we have seen estimates that essentially, if you kind of average across all these different cases, are in the roughly 0.5 range, okay? Really, it's, it's kind of amazingly consistent according to these twin studies. If you look across just you know any random thing not listed here, like different personality variables, et cetera, it's basically always turned out to be about 0.5 for these different factors that you might measure. But it's really important to, to recognize that this method relies on a number of different assumptions. So one is the name of this A is that it's an additive genetic factor, that it, it's a linear assumption that you know having 100% of the same genes is basically you know like twice as strong as having 50% of the same genes but if genes 
themselves interact in complex ways, then having all of the same genes can actually be quite different, quite a bit more significantly different than having 50% of the same genes, right? More than 50% different, right? Um, and so that difference that's called the non-additive nature of genetic uh, interactions that tends to inflate the estimates of heritability you get from this twin method. The other thing that's really important to understand about this method is that it's all kind of relative. And this is the same kind of dynamic that happens when we're looking at neurons and how neurons have this kind of contrast property. They only care about relative differences. Here, the relative differences are these estimates of A depend on your estimates of C and E, okay? And if there's something that's, for example, what we see here in a second, systematically affecting the amount of variance that you get from this C factor, then your estimate of A actually goes up because your estimate of C is going down and because C is sort of in the denominator and uh, A is in the numerator, decreasing the amount of C kind of relatively increases the amount of A. And this is actually what we see. It's very likely uh, that as we uh, sample people and we look at, their, at the actual variability between individual people and we try to estimate these heritabilities, that uh, we're, we're getting a situation where the common environmental influences, these shared environmental influences, are actually being reduced. And so this graph here is kind of a conceptual representation of that idea. This isn't actual data, but it's, it's very likely to be what's actually happening, which is that if you have a high level of education in your environment as indexed by the level of parental education, then uh, it turns out that that uh, effect, that variability between people of those differences in that common environment shrink, okay? And it's simply the case that if everybody has access to high quality education, by the, virtue, by the nature of our brains, we kind of soak up that knowledge to a roughly equal extent. The amount of variance left over between people if they have access to a good education is relatively small, okay? Uh, and so what really creates more variability is when, you know, some people have no access to education, some people have really strong access to education, that kind of variability produces big differences in kind of, you know, overall intellectual outcome. And so as we measure these uh, factors, we tend to be doing these studies in the same kind of uh, environments uh, these Western, Western industrialized uh, uh, environments that actually have a really reduced level of common environmental variance. And as a result of that, uh, our estimates of heritability are inflated. So all of this is to say that uh, these estimates of heritability that we get from twins are in systematically inflated for various reasons. The non-additive nature of the gene interactions and this variance of the environment, and there's actually other factors involved as well. All of these contribute to the idea that the twin estimates are, are, are inflated. So this was originally described as the missing heritability problem in comparison to this other method. And you can see here GCTA uh, this is actually a genetically based method that goes directly from uh, measuring the actual genome of individual people and comparing directly individual people, their genetic, uh, um, what, what percent of the genes they share in common versus not, uh, and then measuring their phenotype, you know, the same kind of overall outcomes, height, weight, et cetera, and looking at uh, the relationship between those two. And so, so whereas the twin method uh, makes a lot of assumptions about the difference between monozygotic and dizygotic twins, here you're directly measuring the genes, okay? So you know exactly what the differences are and you're trying to account for the overall uh, phenotypes, again, directly based on the actual genes. And what we saw here is that when these studies first came out, uh, that they were roughly about half uh, the amount of variance uh, compared to uh, what you saw in the twin studies. So this was known as the, the missing heritability problem originally. Uh, 
But nowadays, people are, are really kind of recognizing that, in fact, it's more the excess heritability, the, the unrealistic excess heritability in the twin estimates due to the systematic errors in the way that that heritability is estimated. So this is actually much more likely to be an accurate reflection of the true influence of genes on these kinds of variables. And you can see that it does really change your overall sense of like how genetically determined things are because these estimates are much smaller. Look at reading, you know, it's below 0.2. So this says that the environment is much more significant uh, an influence relative to what we had assumed previously kind of compared to the overall influence of genes.